so uh, it's great uh, to be here and it's good uh, to be paired up with my good friend, uh, Anusha Ansari. Um, this is a um, particularly important day, maybe for both of us, uh, because in about three hours, we're going to have the first launch of the commercial crew uh, to um, uh, space station. Uh, first time that this is done by a private sector, by SpaceX. A and so uh, maybe um, Anusha Jan, when she joins us, uh, she can further talk about, um, about uh, what's going to happen in about three hours. So I thought what I would do, uh, the, the format is going to be, I'll talk for about five, six minutes and then Anusha John will talk for about five, six minutes and then the last uh, five, six minutes will take uh, three or four questions. So for my part, I thought what I would talk about is how you can pivot from where you were before COVID-19 uh, four or five months ago and how do you adapt your, your business? You know, there was a, um, a uh, heavyweight champion, uh, boxing champion in the US, a brute of a man, fearsome man, and his name was Mike Tyson, uh, maybe about 10, 15 years ago, and he was a generation or two after Muhammad Ali. And they asked him um, about his opponents when they stepped into the ring with him, and he said, they, oh, they all had a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And so uh, then they have to uh, figure out how they're gonna fight me. Well, we all got sort of punched in the mouth uh, about uh, five, six months ago with COVID-19. And the idea is how do, we, how do we react? We had a plan where our business was going and now everything is up in the air. So I'm gonna give you one example uh, of how you could pivot from where you were and take advantage. You know, they say uh, with every crisis comes up opportunities. And so let's talk about this one. Um, you know, I worked at NASA, JPL, my colleagues uh, uh, built spacecraft. We don't build medical equipment. But when this thing happened, uh, a group of uh, JPL engineers uh, who were sent home uh, and quarantined they got together uh, and uh, virtually, and they thought, okay, so what is really needed right now? And it was ventilators. Uh, as you know, um, uh, the supply is very limited and uh, the hospital needed five times, 10 times the amount of ventilators that were available. So um, these engineers, uh, they said, well, let's take a look at how do you make ventilators? They looked at it and say, okay, it needs mechanical engineers. We have mechanical engineers. It needs electronic engineers. We have that. Packaging engineers, system engineers. Well, we have all of that, but with it, we built spacecraft, not medical equipment. But given where we are, why don't we take those skills that we have and pivot and reorient it towards building a uh, ventilators? Okay. So how do we do it, which is different from everybody else does. As you know, uh, you know, Comron earlier talked about disrupting a market. There are many different ways to disrupt a market. You provide a service that doesn't exist. You provide a service that's, uh, and you add on and make it better than what the market leader provides. But there is another one. And sometimes people refer to this thing as 80-50 rule. And that is, don't give everything that a market leader provides, give them only 80% of it, but provide it at 50% of the cost or less. So this is the approach that uh, my colleagues at JPL decided to follow. They looked at the ventilators and they saw it does a lot of things, not all of them needed for COVID patients, which only need high pressure oxygen. So they trimmed uh, the ventilators and they say, we will only provide a fraction of what a general purpose ventilator provides, but we'll try to do it much cheaper. A ventilator costs uh, about $50,000, $60,000. We'll try to do this thing for two, $3,000. 
So they started, they looked at it, and uh, they came up with a very simple design. And then the next thing, of course, was it needed to be uh, marketed immediately because the hospitals needed it. So they looked at the, um, uh, the supply chain and they decided they wanna use only the parts manufactured in the US so we don't have to wait for a part to arrive from China or Germany or Singapore. So with a simple part and a simple manufacturing, they were able to provide ventilators for what is needed for COVID and to do it in short period. They, did, they uh, uh, send it to, uh, uh, to hospitals in about 37 days. Now, in that particular case, we were not out to make money. You know, we licensed it for free to about 100 uh, manufacturers who picked it, uh, picked it up. But it is one way of using a crisis uh, and making an opportunity out of it. So take a look at your business. Take a look at your team. Take a look at what uh, skill base you have. And if, in fact, COVID has made your original business plan untenable right now, try to think about how you can use the same skill base uh, and provide something which is needed in this time of crisis. As I said, we took a bunch of folks who built spacecrafts and built uh, a, a product, uh, ventilators, which was needed uh, at this time. Uh, if time permits, I'll come back and tell you a little bit about you know, how we can um, go ahead and do that. So for now, I'd like to turn it over to my friend Anushe uh, to further talk about uh, this subject. Thank you, Firuz. Um, sorry, I was on just technical difficulty. I was knocking on the door. No one was opening the door. <laughs> um, but it's great to be here with everyone. Um, and. Uh, and uh, you're absolutely right. It is a um, great time for uh, entrepreneurs and innovators because uh, at the heart of every innovator is a problem solver. And right now there are no shortage of problems, uh, whether it's something new that you're creating or um, just something that's uh, like my ventilator was a shortage problem, um, an accessibility problem or just trying to deal with the um, conditions that were created um, that uh, is disrupting uh, businesses. And I think that's where um, a large um, uh, portion of the opportunities uh, lie. If you look at, for example, Zoom technology that we're all using now, uh, and you look at their uh, market value uh, and how it has increased, it shows how something that, um, was not uh, you know, as valuable tool perhaps uh, in, in a business. Now it's a, a critical uh, and necessary um, uh, tool for any business. Um, so one thing that um, you know, every entrepreneur should look at, every business owner um, is looking at is uh, how they can uh, basically uh, re-examine everything they're doing and as they're re-examining uh, look at what parts of their business they can disrupt themselves and uh, basically um, digitize it uh, everything that has uh, worked in in the past in a high touch um, in person uh, very interactive um, uh, environment has to change in this new environment and it is changing. People are adapting um, and, and using Zoom instead of flying. And most probably what will happen is after uh, the pandemic is over, those types of behavior will not completely go back to the way it was before. And it will uh, generate new behavior and these new behaviors opens the door for new types of businesses. Um, so a lot of business tools will be uh, required uh, and there will be a lot of room for these new business tools that can help uh, companies function uh, in this new digital world. Um, another area that uh, has been completely disrupted is um, education. 
um, and any, any function that required a large group of people to come together, stadiums and uh, concerts and events. So finding new solutions that uh, allows people to have these types of experiences uh, with, with uh, being able to keep safe um, it's, uh, it's, it's an area of innovation. Actually, at XPRIZE, we're looking at many of these areas and uh, trying to see if we should be launching some um, competitions to bring the attention of innovators around the globe to come up with ideas. Um, and I think there are great business opportunities there. One thing that um, also this pandemic has done is uh, accelerated a lot of um, technologies that were on this exponential ramp. Um, automation is uh, one of those areas. Um, autonomous driving, uh, robotics, where um, you know a lot of factories were already on the path of automation, um, but uh, now more than ever, everyone's looking how they can further automate. So in case there is another pandemic, the disruption to the manufacturing uh, facilities and, and supply chain will be uh, a lot uh, a lot less. And um, on one hand, this generates opportunity. On the other hand, when you look at it, it also creates a lot of other types of disruption, namely um, job losses. We have always talked about how automation will bring job losses and, and uh, I think everyone looked at it and it was at the pace everyone felt comfortable that um, there will be a balance between new jobs created uh, and the jobs lost and there will be a time to reskill and train people for their new jobs. Uh, but uh, I think those um, rate of change and behavior change uh, is going to happen uh, much faster, which means that um, there's opportunity for the technologies that allows for automation to happen. Uh, but on the other side, um, education for uh, individuals to be able to learn new skills very quickly will become critical. And uh, perhaps even completely looking at um, policies and regulations around work and, and how we view work in our lives will become necessary because uh, all those jobs lost will not be recreated uh, after um, the pandemic is over. Um, so we have to look at how the new economies will function in the future. So um, I think um, if I look at um, what, what are some of possibilities and opportunities, uh, Peter uh, Diamandis, who's the founder of XPRIZE, uh, published a book a long time ago called um, Abundance and then followed that up with Bold. And part of that, he talks about exponential technologies and the six Ds of, um, of um, uh, exponential technologies. But uh, the f a few that I think will be important in, in this um, trend that I'm seeing is that these that uh, are associated with digitization, anything that can be digitized, should be digitized and will be digitized in this new world. Um, and as things become digitized, normally it becomes demonetized. Um, uh, as you can imagine, a lot of the services that you used to pay for or um, uh, things that uh, uh, you had to buy separately were integrated in this device. And, and now it's part of what you get for free or a premium. And uh, as they become uh, digitized and demonetized, then it becomes democratized because access to it becomes ubiquitous. So uh, I think um, uh, what you will see, it's a, even a faster rate of that happening um, uh, now. Um, maybe just a quick uh, comment on something that Firuz mentioned an incredible event that is happening um, today that we're all excited and that's uh, the return of uh, space flight from um, US to fly astronauts uh, to International Space Station. Um, we all watched on Friday until 17 minutes before the launch uh, when due to whether the launch was canceled and it will happen again um, in about, I believe, uh, uh, an hour from now almost. And um, uh, 
that's also a story of entrepreneurship because when you look at um, Elon Musk, um, SpaceX uh, actually started about 18 years ago. And I know 18 years, it's a, maybe a lot of years for most entrepreneurs, but in space years, that's nothing for a company to start from scratch to actually design and build uh, uh, a complete launch system, a new launch system that is uh, reusable for most part. And then on top of that, build a human grade um, you know, uh, capsule and carry astronauts to the space station. In 18 years, it's unheard of. Uh, and, and it is a, uh, a feat that was accomplished um, that started um, a, a long time ago uh, when um, at XPRIZE we started promoting this notion of there should be a commercial sp uh, space program, there should be a program where um, government space agencies and, and private sector collaborate and work together and make this happen. And I think this is a great example of how that has brought in a lot of innovation, success, and created a uh, multi-billion dollar marketplace. So with that, maybe I stop and we can have some Q&A. So um, thank you, Anusha John. And uh, yeah, I am uh, looking forward to, uh, I guess, 12.30, uh, uh, East Coast time to see uh, whether we can launch again today. I hear the um, the weather is not uh, again very good, but uh, but uh, you know we will see. As um, Anusha said, uh, you know there are particular markets right now which are um, uh, prime for innovation. Uh, two of them uh, would be uh, health healthcare and education uh, and anything the digital economy as Anusha talked about. Uh, so uh, take a look at, I, I know for example, uh, the last uh, challenge that uh, space, the um, XPRIZE had uh, dealt with education and how to take the education and make it available in rural areas where people do not have access to um, uh, educational facilities. Uh, it, it was a remarkable uh, product that they uh, put out. So try to um, look at what it is that you can do in, particularly in these two areas, healthcare and in education. Uh, with respect to how do you systematically go about uh, looking on how you can pivot, uh, what I suggest to you, if you already don't know about it, and many of you, I'm sure you do, look up work breakdown structure or WBS, which is basically a methodical way of taking the product that you have, decompose it into its more, the most basic elements, and then you can figure out, you know, what kind of talent do you need? What kind of uh, funding do you need? Uh, and how long will it take for it to reach uh, fruition? Uh, if you don't know about WBS, look it up um, and, and Google it. So I would say if you had a product before COVID and then it turned out that it is now not possible, take a look at what you had, decompose it into a WBS, take a look at your, the skills that you and your team have, and then try to figure out how you can use the same skill that was going to give you the product before COVID now to recombine it in a different way to um, give you an, uh, uh, additional, uh, a, a, a new market. I know Anusha uh, has uh, been a serial entrepreneur. She has started a number of uh, companies and I'm sure the experience in each of the previous company helped her, you know, move forward to the new company using probably the same skills, but combined in a different way. Would you like to talk about that a bit, Anusha? Um, sure. I think uh, it's important, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, you always make mistakes as well and you learn from those mistakes. So it's always good to remember those lessons learned. Um, I, I believe one of the other things that's helpful always is 
um, to, uh, you know, you usually carry team members that you know they are really good and trustworthy with you to your um, other ventures. But in terms of um, technologies and skills, I think um, it depends what area of business you are in. Um, so right now technology changes very rapidly. So you can look at functions and, and, and see uh, how those functions that you provided in one product can be reused. But um, I think individual skill sets is uh, amongst your team members is very important and, uh, and treat everything like a puzzle. Um, I love the um, uh, Apollo 13 example where, um, you know, they had to basically figure out how to solve the problem with what was on the Apollo 13 capsule, they couldn't send something to them. So they had to solve the problem with what they had. So uh, we're in a world right now that a lot of things have been taken away from us with, without any sort of time to adjust. So just uh, imagine this like a design competition, a blank sheet of paper. This is what I have. This is what I want to do. How do I go about doing it? And, and and start just uh, from scratch and design it. And then you can go and see where you have already invested and you have something that's functioning that's, that can work in this new design and bring those in. But don't constrain yourself and try to twist what you have to fit into what you need right now and create something that will be either too expensive or won't be optimal just because you want to make sure you reuse everything. It's better to even start from scratch if you have to, but build something that will have purpose and meaning and, and usefulness and would be successful in the market that we're living now than try to just sort of twist what you have into trying it to trying to make it fit. 